Man, a saga of the outback specially dramatized from the prize winning novel of R.S. Porteous. <laughs> Cattle Man. too much talking about the war. It was something I never had the urge to talk about. But lying in hospital with your whole life behind you and precious little left, it's hard not to go back. <laughs> they say confession's good for the soul. Well, I wouldn't know about that. But if it is, I reckon my soul could stand it more than most. The night sister had come in to give me an injection. She seemed in the mood for talking too. Well... Maybe I should say for listening. I told her about Gallipoli, our first real taste of action. Mmm, what a taste it was. For a good many there first and last, including Eddie York and Sergeant Blade. I gather you thought quite a lot of the sergeant, Mr. McCready. Yeah, he was a good cobber. Mm, thorough good bloke. I never had much time for him to begin with, with all his bluster and laying down the law. Underneath, he was fair dinkum blue. Ah, oh, such a senseless waste of lives. I had an uncle who was killed there. But go on with the story. With the sergeant dead, that left only three of you. Well, there's not much more to tell. Somehow or other, we managed to hang out till the order finally came to withdraw. They got us off. How, I'll never know, but they did. Patched us up and shoved us in the desert to recuperate. Desert? Yeah, Egypt. For long enough, we were stationed just outside Cairo. Only good part of it was we were given horses. For the rest, our world consisted of flies, sand, blister and eat, and the kind of monotony you could only find in the desert. Nothing to do and all day to do it in. Well, wasn't there any fighting? <laughs> the only fighting we saw was amongst the boys themselves. When tempers got frayed and fists start flying. Or when we got into Cairo on leave and the MP started throwing their weight around. <clears throat> Of course, when it come to brawling, me and Danny was in our element. <laughs> if he was as big as you, you must have been a formidable pair. <laughs> <laughs> we could generally hold our own. It used to cost us, though. Cost you? There was an English colonel in charge of the outfit. Mallard, his name was. Colonel Archibald Mallard, DSO. He had a system of fining us when we got into trouble. Fining your money? Yeah. That was apart from throwing us in clink. His idea was to keep us broke. Then we couldn't afford to go into Cairo in the first place. That way, he reckoned we'd stay out of bother. And did you? Mm -hmm. We got on to more than ever. Oh, he was a tough man, that colonel. I remember the first time we crossed swords. I'd overstayed me leave. Next morning, I was dragged up before him like a kid in school about to get six of the bet. Troop McCree reporting, sir. Are the flies troubling you, McCready? Flies, sir, like flame and oath. I've known them bad in me time, but nothing like they are here. A bloke can't breathe. Hold like... your tongue. Big pardon, sir? I was referring to your salute. It looked for all the world as if you were endeavouring to swat a fly on your right cheek. Go out and come in again. And this time, do it properly. Right out, sir? Right out. Yes, sir. Trooper McCree reporting, sir. Are you aware that you are improperly dressed, McCready? Sir? You have a button missing from your shirt. Huh? Oh, so I have. When did that happen? Among other things, you've been charged with assaulting three military police. Uh, possibly it occurred during the struggle. They got no regard for the King's uniform. Silence! Yep. I have no love for MPs, McCready. But I'm hanged if I'm going to have the good name of this regiment spoiled by you or anyone else. Well, sir, you say... Will you be silent? You don't look like a soldier, MacReady. You don't act like one. 
Last night you excelled yourself. Not content with being drunk and disorderly. Drunk, and... sir. Not me. Huh. Wouldn't catch me drinking that jip out fire, would I? It says on this report that you were drunk. Then it's wrong, sir. I never touch a drop. No sober man would behave in such a fashion. Look, Colonel, MPs or not, I don't take kindly to being pushed around. They were under orders to bring you in. If they'd asked me for light, I'd have come with them nice and quiet. But no, they got to get funny. they got to be big men. So I just cut them down a size. Hmm. Well, this may interest you, MacLeedy. I intend cutting you down to size. Well, would that be fitting, sir? Fitting? Are you being a colonel and all? What are you talking about? Well, sir, I never thought officers were supposed to resort to fisticuffs. Creedy! I do not propose to beat you into submission. I have more subtle and effective means at my disposal. Sir? To begin with, I intend to fine you one month's pay. In addition, you will receive no further leave till I am satisfied you've seen the error of your ways. Does that strike you as more fitting? Since you ask me, sir, I'd much rather have the other. I've no doubt. By the look of you, I'd say you've done a good deal of fighting in your time. I've done me sheer. Hmm, it's a pity your talent can't be put to better use. Yeah, that's what I say. In future, then, I'll see you're put on more patrols. Oh, very kind of you, sir, but I wouldn't like no favouritism. The others might get jealous. We'll take that risk. Yeah, well, if I could make a suggestion... That will be all, MacReady. You have permission to withdraw. Yes, sir. And next time you come before me... Kind to see you're not missing any buttons. Hey, boss! Boss! I've been looking all over for you. Did you see the colonel? I saw him. What did he say? Believe it or not, he fined me a flaming month's pay. Find you? As well, I'm confined to the camp till further notice. Crikey, that's a bit rough, isn't it? You know, I've got a funny feeling me and the colonel aren't going to get along too good. I don't think he's my type. Yeah, he's got a reputation for being hard to get on with. As well as everything else, he's going to shove me on patrol more regular. Oh, gee whiz, those flaming patrols. What's the point in them? That's what I'd like to know. Play a nursemaid to a string of mangy camels. We're supposed to see they get where they're going safe and sound. Yeah, well, who's going to stop them? All the ones I've been on, we've never sighted a soul. Over one sand hill, up the next. Those lousy brutes upsetting the horses. I don't reckon I'll ever get used to them. It's the smell that bothers them. Yeah, and the noise. Rumbling and belching, they never let up. Yeah. Still, I reckon they got cause to be bad-tempered, having to spend their lives tramping around this flaming desert. Yeah, that's all they know, a desert. Yeah, I'm getting a bit the same way myself. Seems we've been here most of our lives, too. Uh, you know, it just don't make sense to me. What's that? Keeping us here. Look, what are we supposed to be doing? Oh, we haven't had so much as a smell of action since Gallipoli. Yeah, there's plenty to say we was well off. Better to die like Eddie and the Sarge than die of boredom. It's about time you had another letter from Mum, isn't it? Well, with the mouths as they are, you never know what's going on. Ship's been sunk every day. You can bet a good half of the letters written never get where they're supposed to. I wonder how things are going back home. Well, I've got no worries with Dan looking after things. It all seems so far away. Sort of... Like in another world. Yeah. Oh, well, I reckon it can't last too much longer. It shouldn't be that long before it's all over. We can go back and pick up where we left off. Mm, go back and pick up where we left off. It was a good thought, sister. Even if that's all it was. Uh, I imagine you all needed something to cling to. Yeah, to stop us going off our heads. Funny how clear it still is in my mind, like it was only last week. If I close my eyes, I can feel that desert sun scorching me face. Feel the sand under my boots, red hot. Oh, I hope you're not running a temperature. You do feel a little feverish. Oh, your hand feels good. Nice and cool. Oh, I think you'd better have that injection now. It'll make you sleep. Sister, I told you. I'm not having no blunt down and it'll chuck my leg. Not for you nor nobody. In your arm, Mr. McCready, not your leg. And it's not blunt. Now, please, let's not have any fuss. It won't hurt, I promise. Yeah, you nurses and your promises. I know all about there. it. There. Oh. Oh. That wasn't so bad, was it? Trickery. You win a man's confidence, then knife him in the back. <laughs> Here. Let me fix your pillows for you. Better? No. Not high enough. Well, we'll soon fix that. There, now. Oh, and all my life of... 
Never known so much fussing and fiddling and, and messing about. I don't imagine you've ever spent too much time in hospital. Mm, look, this is any sample. Praise be to heaven that I have. <laughs> oh, it hasn't been that bad, surely. Mm, it's been worse. <laughs> well, never mind. You'll be out soon enough, as good as new. <laughs> you reckon? There's an old saying. You can't keep a good man down. Well, about my age isn't much good to anyone. Nonsense. Why, you're still in your prime. <laughs> oh, why do you laugh? <laughs> oh, if you'd know me in my prime, sister, you know why. Wild horses wouldn't have dragged me in hospital, I'll tell you that. Well, these days, coming into hospital doesn't mean anything. Plenty of people come here for nothing more than to rest. A few days in bed, it's the best tonic in the world. Yeah. Now, if you're quite sure you're comfortable, I'd better get on with my rounds. I'll look in again in a little while. That there needle. Don't seem to be taking any effect. <laughs> it will. Yeah, I'm more wide awake now than I've been all night. With a sore arm to boot. Are you a betting man, Mr. McCree? Yeah, when I get the right odds. Then I'll tell you what I'll do. If you're still awake when I get back, I'll never try to give you another needle again. How's that? How long are you going to be? Mm, no more than 20 minutes. You're on. <laughs> Sweet dreams, Mr. McGreedy. Sweet nothing. I never had it so easy. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. smiling when she left me. She was still smiling when she came back 15 minutes later. Only I didn't see her. The needle had taken its effect. Cattleman, a Grace Gibson radio production. <laughs>